Welcome to Journey Through the Gate, your paranormal portal podcast, as we delve into the many questions and wonders brought on by the supernatural experience. What's on the other side of the gate? Let's find out together. Welcome to this side of the gate. And tonight we have some visitors that are coming back with us. Everybody loved them and they asked for them to come back and they said, okay. So here they are tonight. We have Paranormal Inc. with us tonight. We have Ernie at, well, say hi, Ernie. Hey, what's happening, everyone? <laughs> we have Dave Seiler. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Excellent. Oh, I'm Dave. Yeah, hi. <laughs> And tonight they're going to walk us through the gate and we, and they're going to do what I think is neat. Now, when you're a paranormal group, you always try to, uh, a lot of the good ones try to give back, you know, and they'll do teaching uh, seminars or they'll do group uh, gatherings where they teach you a little bit about equipment and different things before you can go on uh, an investigation with them. They do a little bit of both. So, who wants to tell us about what's going to happen tonight? You're going to give us a little bit of one of your seminars, are you not? Are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Go ahead. <laughs> when when uh, Dave and I, when Dave and I formed Paranormal Inc. Um, almost two years ago, um, we came up with the idea, one of the things that we want to do, uh, since there was so many people interested and so many enthusiasts in the field, we decided we would do what's called Step Into the Paranormal, which was basically a seminar slash Paranormal 101 okay. to just give everybody the uh, nuts and bolts of the field and, and head them in the right direction. Uh, you know, one of our main issues has always been to educate people. Mm -hmm. And for those that want to start investigating or find locations that are able to investigate, we just felt that it was kind of like our obligation to set them on the right path and make sure they, they do it the proper way and uh, give them everything they need to get started on their own journey. Very cool. Very cool. I know a lot of things that people don't think about um, in, the, in the paranormal when we talk about, you know, it's be careful uh, going out and doing investigations, you know, it can be very dangerous. The first thing you think about is, you know, the paranormal or the supernatural side of it. But there's also you got to think about, you know, condemned buildings, you know, falling through floors. You've got right. you're walking they, in on other, you know, other people that might be, you know, temporarily housing themselves there or, you know, multiple other things. We forget to put some of the earthly things in it too, where it's just exactly. plain dangerous or illegal because you're trespassing on someone's property or, or something along those lines. But there are, you know, other supernatural and, uh, you know, and paranormal reasons to where it makes it dangerous as well. You know, protecting yourself before you go. That's always been one of my big things to look, you know, you got no business going in and messing with things, especially we talked about provoking the last time you were on and that's just never a really good idea you don't know <laughs> what you're poking at you know yeah that's one of our that's, that's one of our you know like you see on some of the tv shows with the you know the provocation okay. and daring spirits and you know in my just and this like i said when we speak this is just our opinions it's not saying anyone else's opinion is wrong or there's a right or wrong way right. but dave and i we just choose out of respect not to provoke mm -hmm. and, you know, not just for the demonic, you know, you might piss something off and it follows you home, mm -hmm. you know, for instance. But, mm -hmm. you know, one of my philosophies is that, you know, you investigate some of these places where when the person was alive, they may not have been the best person, you know, that they could be. Right. And. You know, but if you think about it, when everyone's born, everyone's innocent mm -hmm. and some people just choose to take a different path. 
And, you know, who are we to judge, you know, and once they pass over and, you know, based on what your religious beliefs are, you know, once they're on the other side, my opinion is they're back to the person they originally came to this earth as. Mm -hmm. So you go in there with respect, right. regardless of who they are or what they are. Right. Yeah. Right. A lot of people, I tell a lot of people, um, I'm actually a lay minister in the United Methodist Church. Right. So I do things from a philosophical side as well as a scientific side. Mm -hmm. So if, if we take both sides of the, that plane and put them together, it kind of explains a lot of things, at least in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So from the philosophical side, in the King James Version of the Bible, they talk about heaven. They talk about hell. They never actually say it, but there's a third place, purgatory. Right. All right. So we know where heaven is. We know where hell is. Where is purgatory? Mm -hmm. It doesn't really state where it's at. It's just kind of all around. Mm -hmm. Also, um, in um, the Bible, it talks about the, the judgment, the day, day of reckoning, so where all the souls will be judged. Mm -hmm. So there's a waiting room somewhere. We just don't know where it's at. Right. So if we actually go into the scientific side. The body makes energy, correct? Right. Can you destroy energy? No. Just change Can you it. augment energy? Just change it, yeah. <laughs> Bingo. Right. Right on the money. Right. So when our body, our physical body stops working, where does that energy go? Right. I mean, oddly enough, I'm not a scientist at all, but I've had to explain it to people like, <coughs> let's just take it simple. You know, you put water in a pot. All right. You've, now you've got the yep. water in the pot and it's holding its shape and it's doing its thing. And then you heat it up and now it starts yep. to turn into steam and eventually it dissipates. Is it gone forever or is it just changed? It's no. changed. It's it's a compilation, you know, and it's gone off and exactly. become one. And, and that's kind of makes people understand. Hold, yeah. If you hold a tray of ice right above it, mm -hmm. it'll actually turn back to water form right above that pot. How about that? See, and that's so, just amazing. That's it's what amazing. Paranormal investigation, that's what paranormal investigation is all about. Right. Right. So we're taking that philosophical side because it actually talks about resurrection and talks about spirits and it talks about, you know, you know, big, big spirit, Jesus, you know, rising from the dead. Right. And then he was his spiritual form. Right. So we're looking in a scientific mannerism as a paranormal investigation to figure out how that works. Can we communicate? Can we talk to? Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Right. And also, uh, before we get too far off track here, you said communicate. A lot of times people have problems with, okay, what are you communicating with and how do you know, you know, who, you know, the person or the spirit, let's just say the spirit or ghost that you're speaking to at the time is who it says it is, or that we have a lot of phys philosophical, um, and, uh, you know, your beliefs where people say, okay, there are no ghosts. There are no, uh, spirits. They're all demons and they've come here to trick you. And we've had that question here a lot on the show. And, I can tell you from most of the mediums that, that I've spoken with, most of the psychic, psychic mediums, any combination, any flavor you want to look at, including myself, uh, empathic people, um, there's kind of a filter we depend on. I can't speak for, you know, everybody, but it just seems to have this knowing of a filter. Now, I know when I can, I can walk in a room and I can tell when there's been an argument. We all can. You guys have both been, you know, one currently and one before, you know, police officers. You can tell energy in a room. Yep. You can kind mm -hmm. of feel it. it there, there's a thickness, you know, in an argument, in a bad situation. It's kind of similar to that. The same way I can feel when I'm next to something really good. Same thing, you know, in the present. Is that, is that how you feel when you're speaking with me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, all the time, honey. <laughs> but that's that's the thing. So uh, unless there's something, now we could get in and talk all about that, but like if you want to talk about jinn who've been around, you know, supposedly for, for a long period of time, going way back, ancient kind of thing, um, <clears throat> yeah, they might have that ability to be so evil, not all jinn are, but just saying, an evil entity, mm. and have the ability to throw off that kind of goodness, you would say, mm. Is it possible? I can't say it isn't. 
But right. I can't imagine something so evil putting off pure goodness. I don't think it could. I mm-hmm. think it could show it to you. I think it could. You get where I'm coming from? I'm talking about energy here. Right. You know, right. any more than um, a, a, a Holy Spirit or an angel or something of that case could come off as an evil presence right. and feel that way. That's the that's all I can say on that. Um, see, through our, through our experiences and um, this is going off base a little bit, but a lot of the people that contact us um are just completely convinced that there's something <laughs> evil or yeah. malevolent or out to get them. And, you know, we'll interview them over the phone or have them send video or pictures. And, you know, a lot of times what we're coming up with before we even make it out the door to go investigate, a lot of the people that contact us are like, um, these are first time paranormal experiences. Uh-huh. So they're, Um, Yeah, their immediate, you know, their immediate conclusion is it's something evil because, you know, someone will contact me and say, hey, you know, I was in the kitchen and the cabinet door shut or the cabinet door opened or the the drawer opened up. And, man, that must be the devil, you know, but what we we explain to them is, you know, based on the amount of energy that the spirit may have you know, certain spirits can only communicate right. in certain ways. Right. And that just might be their way of getting your attention. It doesn't necessarily mean they want to kill you with the, the cabinet door. Right. It's just their only, you know, right. like when dealing with, with children spirits, you have to keep in mind that, you know, you have to say to yourself, if, if there was a living child here and this child did not talk yet, how would that child get my attention? Mm-hmm. They would pull on your hair. They would pull on your pants leg. <laughs> and that's the same down. thing they do in the spirit world. Right. That's so the right way of putting it. And they might not know. I mean, we take for granted. And that's why I got you guys back on to let us know a little bit of different types of hauntings and things like that, too. Because that's what people do. First of all, we brought up the TV shows. Okay. Well, a lot of the TV shows, again, you know, we've said it a thousand times, they have to have views, they have, they're have, they edited, they're this, they're that, and they want to spark right. interest and, and get your adrenaline up, and that's all part of it. But, you know, and the minute you have something, like you said, as simple as a cabinet door opening and closing, you can be extremely frightened when you put all of that in with it. Um, it's right. very hard to sit in, you know, in your kitchen and go, look at that cabinet door. Wow. You know, oh, yeah. it, it's Absolutely. hard to put it into perspective to where it might not be. I keep trying to tell people, you got to stop trying to categorize all ghosts in one folder. Exactly. Yeah, it's right. Cab- right. It's, See, that's, it's, that's a big part of why, you know, our first seminar out of the gate mm-hmm. was step into the paranormal because that's exactly what we wanted to do was educate people on the types of hauntings and what may cause them, why they might have these hauntings and the Hollywood factor. Yeah. Yeah. And just give them a a dose of reality. And because if you, if you really break it down, um, you know, there's nothing at all to be scared of, you know, and that's one of the main questions we get. You know, oh, my gosh, we've seen the picture of the place you investigated or, or, or held an event. Why aren't you scared? No, because it's, it's how you go into you, you go in to look at it. You know, we're, it, we're not going in to be, be – I mean, sure, some things creep you out and some right. things catch you off guard. Right. But you're going in at a, a scientific mindset and you're, you're trying to gather evidence and you're, right. you're trying to prove something. You know, it, it, it's it just really depends how you look at it. And that was a big part of why we decided to try to educate people, you know, before they start their their own investigation. And, and, and I definitely want to get into the whole seminar thing. I wanted to bring this up because it sounds silly and I cannot remember if we talked about it last time, but it's such a wonderful visual to give people because, you know, with this show, they're just listening. And, you know, that's one of the right. the best parts of what I miss about, you know, the old days when you just heard a song and it didn't have a video and you got to create your own visual in your head, you know, 
But that's mm-hmm. that's good about this show because you can. Now here's a visual. Anybody that ever saw Ghost, I thought that was so neat. Uh, you know, take all the silly stuff aside. There was a lot of truth to that movie. And mm-hmm. if you remember how long it took um, Patrick Swayze's character just to learn to move a penny up the wall. Yep. He had to try right. and try and try and try just to get that penny to go up the wall. And one of my favorite scenes, too, was on the subway where the other ghost was trying to teach him to kick cans and yell and push and do all these all other right. things. What if it's that? What if that's what it's like? I mean, right. you have to, like you said, with the cabinet door or being able to pick up and throw right. a, a mug across the room or the remote control. And see, uh- at the beginning of the beginning of 2019, I, I spoke with you off air about this a few weeks ago. But the beginning of the year, I started writing my first book, and that's exactly what I'm trying to put into this. Mm-hmm. Is you know the the it's it's all uh, nonfiction, of course, and, and the thing is, I I'm starting it back in the very early 70s. And, you know, my first encounters of hearing about spirits and my family dealing with spirits and in writing this book, you know, one of the main factors I'm trying to do is really set the stage so that when people are reading it, hopefully that they can actually be back in that time Mm -hmm. and they can really see and smell and sense exactly what I did. Right. You know. Back when these incidents were occurring, you you understand what I'm I saying? I absolutely do. That's what I try to do with my book too, and my whole right. sense of the writing of that was right. for that very reason. Because if someone had an experience that they're trying to match up, just to see, am I crazy, or has anybody else experienced anything like this? I had to really stop and think, Ernie. You know, how did it sound? How did it look? What was going on around? Did I see a light? Was it more of a sparkling? Was there a sound? And just right. so they can match it up, because that's where we're at. I think in the paranormal, you know, right now. I think we've gone. I don't know, but it seems like we went through this rush of, you know, evidence. You know, take the feeling out of it, just the science. Which again is nothing wrong. Um, and then we started to mix a little of the science and put the feeling back in. And now we're really just trying to figure what the heck is going on here and how can we communicate better and uh, right. really straightening and clearing that out. And I think that's one of the number one things first to try to figure out you got something in your room, you know, and it, it you know, whether it's it, you know, like right now, I'm just talking about human spirits. Just walking through and not paying any attention to you. What is that? Do you have something standing next to your bed trying to get your attention? Is it only a half an you know half an apparition? Why? Right. You know, is it doing it to scare me? It's just a head. You know, it's doing it to scare me. It must be evil because it's just a head. No, it may not have enough energy to manifest fully, and that's all exactly. it's got right now. Exactly. Exactly. So that's where I'm trying to get at to try to help people understand a little bit more about. Types of hauntings, types of ghosts. Is it a ghost? Is it something else? Because I think right. we're jumping to too many conclusions, especially shadow people. Everybody well, see, a lot of, and a lot of people, people we, yeah. get, we get tons of pictures and videos. Well, see, right from the start, I'm not a big fan of orbs. And Dave and I, we, we I don't want to say argue, but we debate this a lot. <laughs> a lot. And see, I, I mean, I think that's what makes Dave and I a good team is we're not scared to disagree. Right. Yep. And fight it out. You know what I mean? Right. And, there, you know, we get a lot of orbs, but most of them are dust or flecks or bugs or yeah. this. Or right. That. And see, what, what we what we try to tell people is, you know, we get tons of pictures with, hey, we captured these orbs and, uh, you know, and, you know, we it, we never make fun of people. Right. We never criticize people. Yeah. Be, right. You know, you have to educate them. Right. And, you know. A lot of people will send a – and it'll be a legitimate orb. Don't get me wrong. Right. And – but people have to understand when dealing with things like orbs, orbs are natural because that's how our electrical waves carry, you know, right. carry through the air. Right. You know, and with all the electronics and the devices and, you know, just because it's a legitimate orb doesn't mean it's a legitimate ghost. Right. That – 
and en- that is signifying that energy is there. Mm-hmm. And yes, if there is a spirit present and needs that energy, mm-hmm. that's where it's going to draw from. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it all yeah. goes hand in hand, but. Right. You know, just because you, you captured a orb, it looks like a moon, you know, and you know, it's legit and we know it's legit. That does not mean that, you know, that's grandpa Bill standing there. True, true, you know, it's just, totally that's agree. just one. I'm totally, sorry. Go ahead. To, I was going to say totally agree. And, but the thing is too, is sometimes it is, you know, right. a lot of times it isn't, but sometimes right. it is. And that's where we are again in the paranormal because we've come almost out teched ourselves where we've got so many pictures now and so many, yeah. you know, videos. See, or, I, I, you I know. try to stay away from, we use all the high tech toys and cool stuff too, but I try to, I try to stay away from using the gadgets that are specifically made yeah. to find ghosts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, if you, I agree. In some and ways, once yes. again, <clears throat> Once again, it's it's just, you know, it's our opinion and what we like to use, but we like to use equipment that has a primary function. K2 meters are my favorite. Right. Favorite I mean, because K2 meter, a uh, thermal imaging, a FLIR camera, yeah. they, they have a primary purpose. They wasn't created to yeah. find ghosts. Understood. You know. Yeah. You know, that's why a lot, a lot of times, like, yeah. if you watch... Uh, if you watch Ghost Adventures, um, you'll see Zach sometimes always goes back to the Instamatic Polaroid where the picture pops out. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, and stuff like that. That that's hard to disprove right there. Yeah. It's hard hard to find art for it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's hard oh, to disprove right there when you you use something like that. Okay. Now I got three quick stories to tell you. See, that's what happens okay. to us. We get together, and I want to bounce stuff off of you guys and bounce stuff off of me. I love it. You know, it's so much fun. Uh, okay, orbs. Best two ever, ever, ever in my book. I saw a vid, and it was a Christmas morning, and the grandparents had on both sides had passed. First baby, lots of pictures, lots of vid, and it was an old, um, I, I don't want to say eight millimeter, but it was it was back. You know, it, it, it was back. And the orbs, uh, they're just taking pictures, you know, baby sitting in front of the tree, you know, banging on a present, whatever. Now, the orb comes in and kind of circles around, circles around the baby's head and then kind of hovers above it. Two more come in and do the same thing. And then mm. all three, yeah, wow, right? All three of them, one was bigger than the other, but they were they were all fairly um, emanating light at the same way. Right. Okay. Right. One was bigger than the other. Then the three came around, kind of scooted like it hung for a second. Then they scooted, circled around the dog that was sleeping on the bed next to next to the baby on the floor, then zoomed up and went through the family portrait on the wall and took off. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. And see, that's the yeah. one thing about orbs. Yeah. A lot of people make the mistake of saying dust is orbs. Uh-huh. Then no. Orbs will have a flight pattern. Right. Um, if you actually check our YouTube channel. I was just getting ready, I was just getting ready to bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was actually filming. Ernie was downstairs investigating. And um, he actually got. Um, I got a hit on my spirit box that said behind, behind you. Yeah. yeah. And I, just as he wow. said that. An orb on the video, it clears day, comes in top right, comes down towards Ernie across a whole bunch of like stuff in the middle of the room, right. goes towards him, and then kind of hovers a second, goes to the right, mm. does like a J hook, goes to the right again, mm-hmm. then comes down at about the five o'clock position and goes off screen. Yeah. And it literally h- hangs right by him as he as he's getting the behind you. But I've right because my, the spirit box said behind you, and I radioed up to Dave. I said, hey, Dave, keep an eye behind me. I just got something that said behind you. And no sooner I said that, you can see this orb just yep. come in and dance around me. Yeah. And if I, if I, my memory serves me correctly, it exited the same way it came in. Uh, bottom right, it came in yeah. top, top right, exited bottom right. Yeah. Okay. Now, see, that's almost, I mean, I, I, I would hate, I hesitate to say like an intelligent orb. You know, it's not a bug right. zip, zip, and zipping, and it's not dust. Well, you can tell uh, if you watch the video, you can see some light dust, mm-hmm. 
but it's all traveling one way. And this, right. this orb had all the characteristics, which makes it a, an orb. Yeah. And as the yeah. dust still flow and this thing had its own pattern right. and decided, Hey man, I'm going to exit stage right. And, uh, do my own thing uh, here. I have know. a picture I've got to send you that you will love. Yeah. It actually has a whole bunch of stuff in it, but you can actually see dust in the picture. You can, oh, yeah, I'm going to take this phone. You can actually see a bug in the picture and you can see this orb that's literally golden in color. Yeah. When you blow up the orb, you can see that there's one, two, three, four rings in the orb. Yes. Yes. Yeah, see. So you can see it was in 2017. Yep. Uh, at Haldeman Mansion. Right. So, and that's one of the things. The, a lot of times, I, they'll say you almost see a face in some. Some of them you'll see the rings. Some of them would be that the the color. You know, it's it's, it's a giant coin that's floating. That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But you can see right through it. But it's it's bright. I mean, this thing is huge bright. Well, see, that's the thing. You know, you you guys said in the beginning. You know, like you kind of have back and forth on the orbs, and I can understand that. I can yep. absolutely understand that because there is a distinction between I can remember watching a live of uh of some you know paranormal friends going through something I can't remember what it was and it was a cat it was like it wasn't a castle it was something next to it I can't remember what but they're saying you know beware there's lots of drafts in here don't tell us you know that you're seeing orbs and calling in and tell you know and all this other stuff because there's just too much and it's old and we're kicking up a lot of dust and things like that and I'm like dude you don't understand you have to look at your film. You have three, four, five, six orbs following behind you, going up and yep. down. They're going against the draft, which they yep. normally. They're not following a draft from the window. They're following you. They're going in and out. They're crisscrossing and coming back down into the group. I mean, it's like they're following with you. You have to look at this on the film. It's a difference. It's an absolute difference. The other one I saw that absolutely blew me away was... Uh, um, it was on film, and then I also saw the still of it, and it was in, um, oh gosh, I can't remember it now, California, La Bianca, uh, Sharon Tate. And I just, yeah. I really, it breaks my heart when something like that happens, and I'm thinking, gosh, how long do they have to, if, if they are stuck, you know, before somebody goes in there and helps them? That's me right out of the gate. You know, I just right. don't understand why people would just keep going, 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 and not help them. But they got a picture. And on the EVP at the same time, they hear a female voice say Sharon. And right. the orb is hovering where, like, almost came into where the front door, because remember that house now, the uh, I think it's Oman, Oman, I think he owns it. it his house is not exactly uh, where the house was. It's, it's a different house now. The picture was taken, and it's a, just like you said, it's like has a golden glow to it and it's got the rings. The kicker is there's a smaller orb within the orb. She was pregnant. Do you see what I'm saying? Easy. We we were in the basement of the speakeasy. Um we wasn't getting a lot of activity until like the last hour. However, I caught a picture of a light anomaly, and I'm I'm going to send it to you right now. You can see it with your naked eye. I'm going to. I'm, he took a picture. It, it's really cool. I'm going to. I'm I'm going to send you the the regular size, and then the second picture I send you is going to be where it's blown up a little bit. Yeah, and it's all it. It looks like it's a light anomaly, but the tail of the light anomaly looks like a chain of orbs. A chain of orbs. Wow. I've, I've never seen this before, and wow. when I want to get your take on it. I sent it to Laura Shirey of the Haldeman Mansion, who now runs York Ghost, Tours. York Ghost Tours. And she even said all the years she's been doing this, she's never seen one quite like this. So I'm going to I'm sending it to you now. All right. You send it to me via messenger. Yeah, I'm gonna. I sent. I just sent you the original size, and now I'm gonna send you the blown up size. And just give me your opinion on this light anomaly. <coughs> I gotta say, if you want opinions on pictures, I'm gonna give you mine. I love the new one of you, Ernie. <laughs> Which one? That? It's you in this uh, knit hat. It's just. It's a great picture. Oh, that's my. Uh, that's my advertisement for for Dan for the Hinsdale house. He sent me the Hinsdale house. 
You like it? I love it. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I see. I'm going to put these, if, with your permission, I'm going to put them in the uh, link below the vid so the listeners uh, can see. Is that cool? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, I see it. Yeah. I mean, isn't that the, yes. the thing? Is, when it's I, not a trail. You know, it's not like it, it's moving so fast that you've got a trail like you would have like a bug. Right. You know? And the thing, yeah. if you look. Yeah. If you look on the original size photo, there's right. really no right. dust around. I was yeah. actually standing still for quite a while. I was in there by myself. Oh. And when I took that, I immediately saw that in the viewfinder of my camera. And, you know, of course, I couldn't blow it up till I got home. Yeah. And when I did, I, I was amazed. Yeah. I mean, it does look like that. And you wonder, you know, I mean, it, it's energy is such a miraculous thing. You wonder, is that a group of people coming in together? Is it? You know, I mean, you yeah, could get even as philosophical neat. as saying, what What if this was a human being with, like, split personality? You know, would it come in on right. two orbs? You know, I mean, there's so many questions, you know. Because that's that, just I, it. Immediately, I immediately sent that to Dave, and like I told him over the years, I mean, I've captured hundreds of light anomalies. And uh -huh. this it's one just, like it, it, yeah. it, it just looked like the, the orbs were all, like, in a parade, yeah, you know. yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like there's one big leader and then the rest are coming through. Right. But, you know, who's to say that they can't do that? Who's to say right. that a group doesn't hang together, you know, for whatever reason, you know? I mean, right. that's just it. There's just so many questions um, right. in this. And, you know, that's the cool part, too. We don't really have to have all the answers, but it's so fun looking into it and asking questions. You got to think about it. In. Do you really Do you really want all the answers? No, I don't. The only you know, thing that I wanted when I started this was to prove that I, you know why I started. I had the whole haunted house when I was a kid, and right. I felt so bad right. because I was torn away from the house, and I wasn't able to help the ghost. So I think I've been trying to help them ever since, you know. That that was my, See, that's that's my story. Like uh, last month when you and I were talking, and, mm -hmm. you know, we were getting into Paranormal Inks investigating and, the play, oh. you know, all the stuff we do and where we've been and whatever, and, you know, I was saying to myself, you know, I really want to up my game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think I think, the, you know, what I really want to start doing now is we always go in and help the clients right. and, you know, help ease their mind. Or, mm -hmm. you know, if we have to call someone in to get rid of something. But, you know, I think a, a good way of upping my game is to actually try and help the spirit, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Instead of just. Going in and saying, hey, look what we caught, you know. It, it well, then just... we did our chart, our new seminar that we're starting uh, next month. It's called Chard, and it has to do with actually helping the spirit. I would right. love to come and speak at that sometime. I would love right. to set up to where I can come and speak to, to your people on that because that's been my whole, I've spent 50 years doing that. And that's, right. but that's the whole thing. We all start out for a different reason and get different takes on things and different perspectives. And see, when I started digging, like, oh gosh, I mean, really seriously digging, I was like 11, 12, 13. I mean, seriously. I was exactly. Very I know. I, yeah. That's back. Yeah. I started research yeah. at a very young age, you know. Yeah. Before. You know, like we, you and I, we've been researching this stuff for, yeah, you, you know, Decades. before the whole investigating, Decades. you know, was a phenomenon, mm -hmm. you know, it was the experiences that we had or did mm -hmm. loved ones had that sparked our curiosity of why the heck is this happening, exactly. you know, or yeah. who are these people? And see, I had you know? the thing to the extra thing of being an empath and actually feeling their pain, their confusion, their anger their worry, right. their desperation, and it affected me so that I couldn't, my heart couldn't help but to go that route. It's like, right. you know, and then the first thing I pick up that's really starting to teach me was all of Hans Holzler's books and, you know, all the different right. things through that. And that was his approach. He would go in extremely scientific in so many ways, but he would go in there and just, okay, madam, we're going to help you here, you know, what's going on in the house he did all that investigation in the back search on history yada yada but then when he got down to it using a trance medium he helped the spirit and tried to find out why is the spirit there what's going on what's your story you know let's try to unravel that because by doing that he is helping the client he is helping the homeowner or the business owner or whoever it is because if you're helping the now, spirit then you're figuring it out 
One of the and this is based on my my religious beliefs. And I can always remember my my mother as a, a child telling me this. Someone experiencing a what they feel might be a, a, a paranormal event or a lot of times a, a loved one that passed may come to you in your dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. you know, and I think a lot of times they come to in your dreams is so they don't startle you when you're awake. But yeah. one of the simple things for people that's listening to this show, if you feel that a loved one is visiting you or trying to contact you or contacting you in your dreams, an old Catholic uh, solution is simply just when you lay down at night, just say a prayer for them. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's said that, that that spirit or that family member just simply may need a prayer. Right. Just an uh, extra boost. There's you know what I mean? Stronger. We're talking about energy. I can tell, and I've said this a, a bazillion times. I'll say it a bazillion times more to my listeners. There's nothing stronger. There is no energy stronger than love. And right. Amen. by putting that out, you know, and I, and I often tell um, people, you can never tell a person how to grieve or whatever, but I've had a lot of experience with grief throughout my life right. and I oh I just chose to look at it like of course we miss them so bad but instead right. of crying when their song came on I'd turn it up and sing it with them and say right. remember the time we did this and we laughed and we danced and I always try to end that in some kind of laughter and you know uh good energy sending good energy to them because I think right. that helps both you and them so and see another thing the same thing yes if you notice, and um, and I agree with you 100% that, that love is the strongest thing. And anything that, you know, Dave and I may may post or write or on the merch, the Paranormal Inc. merchandise we sell somewhere, you'll always see my phrase, one love. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, that. It goes along with what you're saying, and what that means on from, on our behalf is anyone that's, that's listening to this tonight and visits our website or our Paranormal Inc. Facebook page, we started the website and the YouTube and all that stuff because we want people to have a comfortable place yep. to ask questions, to post pictures or videos that they're not sure of. Right. And, you know, if we as investigators, researchers, enthusiasts, or just the folks that like to watch the TV shows, if everyone brings this love together, mm -hmm. there's nothing that we can't accomplish in this field. And, true. you know, we get pictures and videos all the time. And, you know, sometimes we have to tell them, hey, you know, it's a reflection from the IR or, mm -hmm. you know, it's a flash that bounced off the window or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the the moral of my story is our one love theme is you can come to us, bring us anything. And it's strictly professional all the time. So anyone that has anything that, that they want to share or, you know, get out there to the world, mm -hmm. hey, Bring it to us. We'll get it out there for you or, you know, post it on our pages and, you know, respectfully, we'll give our professional opinion and everyone can feel comfortable doing it right, right. and keep the, you know, like I, I, I can't emphasize this enough that everybody that's involved in this field, no matter how you're involved, we're all in it for the same reason, for the same love and for the same passion. True. And that's something, too, with the show. When I started it, I never thought that I was going to start creating this chain, what I call just this chain of help. Because right. the first thing I can do now when somebody contacts me, I just had one two weeks ago, and it was a very devastating case. I mean, I honestly believe just, you know, like I said, I just put it out there. I said, you know, I'm going to kind of lean this way, but again, don't go on what I'm saying. I'm going to send you to this person. Where are you? Can you give me an idea where you are? Because... I've got people all over. I've got people from Scotland, UK. I've got them in California. I've got them in North Dakota, South Dakota, because we've done this and we've created this chain of help. And you guys are in that, you know. Right. And, you know, I get we something were, like that. Yeah. We I, were, I know who to send them to. A, uh, we were on a 
a live radio show, uh, I guess a few mo- a month or two ago. And we actually had people calling in. I, I think it was from Austria mm-hmm. or Austria. What? You know, so it, I mean, this goes worldwide oh, and sure. especially like when we do um, world's largest ghost hunt. Yeah. Um, you know, last year, Dave headed up the uh, lead IT for the whole entire project. Yeah. And, you know, we were we were uh, broadcasting live simultaneously in 19 countries. Mm. Yes. You know what I mean? It, I Just do. you th- I think do. about that for a minute. That's and that's part of the that's part of the project. Mm hmm. We we had a hundred, I think it was 154 locations in 19 countries, and all our energy, all our love, and all our mindsets were all on the same thing at the same time. That's amazing. Now you you tell me the energy level there. Mm -hmm. And see, that's just it. And it works the other way, though, Ernie. And that's what people don't understand. I mean, I tell Uh, people all the time. I mean, can you imagine the energy? And, you know, let's just pick a church. Let's just say a church, and it's a, one of my favorites. It's like, you know, like a Southern Baptist where everybody's just getting up and singing, and they're having a good time. Man, I've never been to one like it. It's just a wonderful, overwhelmingly warm, loving feeling. And you can just imagine right. the love energy coming off of that place. Now, right. now, now pack a theater full of people watching a movie like Saw. Right. You see what I'm saying? Or or another exactly. or another type of thing like that where everybody's just you know for whatever reason uh, right. just experiencing that same negative kind of energy, and I mean it's the same thing. Energy works that way, and I tell people all the time too. I mean, you guys know as well as I do that if you are in you're going into a place, I, I have paranormal investigator friends and you know all kinds. That'll say if I'm in a down spirit, if I'm like real depressed, if I'm, you know, going through a bad patch or something, I won't go in because anything in there is going to be drawn to that. And I'm at a weak state and they're smart enough to know that. And it's just the other way around. I tell you this, I I have a, for instance, to go along with, with what you're saying. Um, One of the locations that we do seminar slash investigations, we had a group one night. Now, these are paying people that come in and want to, you know, have us lead an investigation. And they were just like a just a bunch of downers. And Mm -hmm. like I'm thinking to myself, why did these people even come here? And it was just that's just the way the night went. And nothing. And then the next time we were there, we did another seminar and and the group we had. Actually, it was um. There was a radio contest, yes. and the winners oh got to uh, investigate. investigate with us. And I tell you what, this crowd that that, that came in that night, they were excited yeah. and just bouncing off the walls and wanted to yeah. know everything and do everything. And the venue was, nuts. and it was like the mansion came to life. Yeah, and they. they you know, you get these locations and that you almost got your nose broke that yeah. too. <laughs> but it's you Hold get story. you get these locations that are investigated every weekend. Now, so I feel the spirits that are there, they choose to be there. You know, they want to be there. That's their home, that's their yep. time period. And I do think the amount of activity you get is based on the energy you bring in. Yeah. You know, yeah, and you, when you come in week after week with the same EVP questions and, mm-hmm. you know, you're not going to get much. But this group we had in particular that night, I mean, this was a live crowd and you could mm-hmm. just feel the excitement and the energy. It was almost like before, like if you go to a rock concert and you're waiting for that band to come on, right. how that energy, energy. builds up. Mm-hmm. That's just how this investigation started. And I mean to tell you, the place came to life, and yeah. we had yeah. an amazing. Yeah, it, people don't realize what energy can do. It's absolutely well, true. I, here's the thing: I, I I'm standing in a doorway with my back to a room, and then there's actually stairs behind the the, the room. Ernie's directly in front of me, equipment on the ground. <clears throat> the radio contestants are to my right and to my left, and there's the producers of the show, the radio show, to uh, to my about my two o'clock position. I keep hearing like a shuffle behind me. So I'll turn around with my light and nothing's there. Then you'll hear, <sighs> you turn around with the light, 
nothing there. Then you'll hear like something drop on the floor, like 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 screw like a screw or something. Turn around, nothing's there. After the fifth or sixth time of this, I was kind of getting frustrated. Like, what is behind me messing with me? Right. Just as I turn the light off, I'm turning from my right to my left to look back at Ernie. The young lady who's to my right grabs hold of my arm, and it sounds like a truck hit the wall directly to my right. Mm. It made the entire building shake, and it, it, the, the noise it made, everybody heard it. Mm. And that fight or flight um, feeling you get, right. oh, oh, yeah. Um, my reaction was, jump away from it. Of course, Ernie, who was directly in front of me, had time to kind of lower his head. Oh, no. And took my head. My forehead right in his nose. Well, I was trying to guard the equipment. He was he, logistically, he was trying to guard the equipment. It didn't work that well. This is why we say paranormal investigation can be dangerous, people. It can. <laughs> well, that day we had another investigation yeah. out in Gettysburg, and he gets there with these big old Stevie Wonder glasses oh, on. Man. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, what's up with the glasses? He takes them off. Black I eyes. gave him two black eyes. Yeah. Ouch. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that happens. And I'm wondering, too, if that energy, if, if it didn't pull, because that takes a lot of energy to make a bang like that. You know, oh, the, ba- the noise it made really scared everybody, yeah. including me. It was, I mean, literally a foot away from me to my right. Mm. So what we did was we collected all the equipment and went right into that room right afterwards. See what's up. And every equipment came to life. Yeah. It's amazing. We got keys. We've got, you know, REM. We got Mel. We got K2. Everything just came to life for some reason. Well, see, and we've been it's that people. Room yeah, it's the people, Dave, because you know, I mean, how many diff- 